Okay, we started this conversation back in April with Dr. Prezorno. Now we're gonna nail it. We're gonna nail it as far as what are we doing in the home? What are the toxins in the home that you're putting on your skin, on your, in your eyes, in your ears, in your hair? What are these toxins the we show. need to become aware of? So fasten your seatbelt, we're gonna learn and grow together. Okay, Dr. Pizzorno, I think it's time to dance, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> and I'll see you moving. Here we go. They're giving me the head bob, huh? <laughs> I'm seeing hotel room. <laughs> now, is your talk open to the public? Or just for doctors? Well, it's for doctors, but I'm sure that anybody who's here. You can count on me. I'll be right here. Right here waiting for you. Look at all the... <laughs> it's your book. <laughs> This is the place you can always turn to when you need a friend. The Lillian McDermott Show. To reach out to Lillian, visit her on the web at whenyouneedafriend.com. Now let's all learn together. Here's Lillian McDermott. Hello, my listening friend. It's so nice we can meet each other on the air on this beautiful best day ever. And for those of you who are new to the Lillian McDermott Radio Show, the purpose of the show is to provide a safe place where you can go to when you need a friend. It is my commitment to provide alternative ways to heal, and it is my mission to make awareness, responsibility, and truth a part of our everyday life. And I hope you, my listening friend, will feel empowered to embrace a new truth and live the life of your dreams. Just recently, I came across this book called The Toxin Solution. Now, we hear about all the different toxins in our cleaning products, right? We know about that, but we still use them. As a matter of fact, I had a, a cleaning lady that was going to start cleaning my house and she had this cough and she told me, oh yeah, I don't, I don't use gloves. I don't use this. I don't use that. And she was, didn't show up when she was going to clean. I found out she was diagnosed with COPD. Doesn't smoke, but she was diagnosed with COPD. Hmm. I wonder if any of those toxins had anything to do with it. Never know. So today we have Dr. Joseph Pizzorno. We started this conversation last month and he is in town this weekend to give a talk about toxins, toxicity, how uh, the toxins in our body or in our environment affect our body, our health. Are you listening? Are you listening? It's time. It's time for us. Now, the book is called The Toxin Solution, How Hidden Poisons in the Air, Water, Food, and Products We, are, we, are, we Use Are Destroying Our Health and What We Can Do to Fix It. This is um, a wonderful book that has caused me to look at my makeup. It's caused me to look at my cleaning products. It's caused me to do uh, an inventory of what I can do to change things other than my food. I can control everything else. Maybe, maybe not. But here to empower us is Dr. Joe Prezorno. And since it is our sole purpose in life to give and receive love and knowledge, I am so grateful that Dr. Joseph Pizzorno is here to do just that. Thank you, Dr. Pizzorno, for being on the show today. Lily, great to be with you, with you again. Yeah, this is really quick. I found out that you were going to be giving a talk in Florida, in Orlando, Florida, at the Gaylord Palms tomorrow morning. And I'm like, I want to be a fly on the wall because you'll be talking and educating doctors. And this is wonderful. So talk a little bit about your credentials and how you got involved with toxins that we don't even know are toxic. Well, again, thank you for the invitation to be with you today. My pleasure. So I've been involved in medicine for about 50 years now, half a century. First as a researcher in conventional medicine, then as a student in naturopathic medicine, then as a practitioner. Then I started Bastyr University in 1978, mm -hmm. and have since then uh, graduated literally thousands of students who think like I do. And I've written seven books for the consumers and five textbooks for doctors. And I am the editor-in-chief of a journal called Integrated Medicine, a clinician's journal, or IMCJ for short. It's PubMed, PubMed indexed and has 35,000 doctors to read it. Mm. 
So I lecture literally all over the world now on how environmental toxins have become the primary drivers of chronic disease. And uh, as I look into the research more and more of it, it is just studying what I'm finding. So just last weekend, for example, I was in Vancouver, British Columbia, where I gave both a public lecture on toxins and infertility, and then a lecture to doctors, a three-hour lecture to doctors on toxins and infertility. And as bad as the data was on, for example, diabetes, it's even worse for fertility. It's very clear that these toxins are a huge uh, problem for fertility. And now in North America, about one out of four couples is having trouble with fertility. So it's become so much more common now than why I started in medicine half a century ago. You know, it's, it's kind of scary. You know, you hear these um, comments about population control, that they're controlling us with different chemicals. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's willful or do you think that's just greed? <laughs> so let me, answer, let me answer that in two ways. Number one is it could be Mother Nature saying to us that we are perhaps a failed experiment and we better <laughs> get our act together or else. Yeah. Uh, and the other side is um, I think that modern civilization is wonderful, it has so many benefits, but we haven't been careful enough about what we're leaking into the environment. Mm -hmm. So it's not like, oh, civilization is bad or industry is bad or chemical chemistry is bad. No, it, you know, we need chemistry. It makes our life so much better. But we have to stop leaking these things into the environment, the metals and the chemicals, because they're, they're basically poisoning us. Not just us, but the plants and the, and the animals and such are all being poisoned by this stuff. So let's stop doing it. Get it out. You know, I, I'm, I'm willing. As a matter of fact, I, um, today I'm wearing a new brand of makeup because of our interview. Oh, and, good. Uh, yeah, it's, it's called Keep Me Safe. It's called Keep Me Safe Organics, and I'm trying it out because of all the toxins. I started looking at my makeup, and I thought, you know what? I, can, I look at my food, and I focus on organics there. What about my skin? What about the biggest, the largest exterior organ I have? Let me take care of that, too. So I'm starting my journey there as well, and thanks to you. And we're going to continue our conversation with Dr. Joe Pizzorno when we return worldwide at whenyouneedafriend.com. We'll be right here waiting for you. So excited about this conversation, Dr. Pizzorno, because um, you know, yesterday I had a conversation with this beautiful young lady who started this um, company, and it's all about keeping people safe. So your message is getting out there, and people are becoming aware. Did you think it would be this bad at this point 50 years later? So I think that's actually a really good question. Because when I looked at why patients were sick 50 years ago, it's very different than what it is right now. Mm -hmm. So I, I, and I'm naked by the doctor. I always knew that the you know, health was dependent upon our nutritional status and our toxic status. But in the past, all the toxins were things that we chose to do. You know, the active uh, yeah, smoking you know, or yeah, you smoke. You know, <laughs> you work yeah. in the industry. You know, it's just kind of obvious. But what's happened starting started about 50 years ago, but really, really bad about 30 years ago is we've now put so many toxins into the environment that now the environment is making us sicker, independent of our choices. I mean, mm. If you're just living <clears throat> regular life, you know, trying to eat your fruits and vegetables, avoiding smoking, you think, well, I shouldn't have much toxins. But the reality is that the air you breathe, the water you drink, the food you eat, it's all full of toxins. <clears throat> it's it's kind of scary because, you know, even, who was it? Do you know who Norm Sheely is? Oh, sure. Okay, so Norm came on the show and said, he said the, that the, the rain, the rain has um, uh, Roundup, 60 or 50% of the rain or 60% of the rain, I forget what total he said, has Roundup in it. And, I'm, and I said to him, well, if rain has, is that way, and I don't know where he got his information. Yeah, I haven't heard that one before. I'm yeah. Look yeah, I have to look it up too. But I was wondering if you knew about this. I said, what about our organic food? That means that rain is falling on our organic food with Roundup in it. So here I am thinking I'm controlling my environment, but the reality is I may not be. And so what can we do that's so scary? It really is scary, but at the same time we have to, because fear can be more harmful sometimes than whatever we're doing. Right. So we have to keep the balance. Not, not a topic yet. I'll be right here waiting for you. Okay. 
right, here we go. You can text Lillian McDermott or leave her a voicemail at 407-373-5959. Once again, here's Lillian. Welcome back to the Lillian McDermott Radio Show, where we always learn and grow with one another. And today's teacher is Dr. Joe Pizzorno. Dr. Joe Pizzorno is the author of the book, The Toxin Solution, How Hidden Poisons in the Air, Water, Food, and Products We Use Are Destroying Our Health and What We Can Do to Fix It. It's a really informative book, uh, many years in the making here with Dr. Pizzorno, and now you get to share with us because we know about the chemicals, we know about the bleaches, we know about you know all the products that we use, and I always use gloves. I know people are using these cleaning chemicals without any gloves. What do you say to people that are cleaning with 409 and Ajax or whatever it is and don't have any gloves or any mask? Well, um, as in contrast to what we were told, that our skin is a perfectly uh, perfect membrane, keeps out the bad stuff and lets in the good stuff like vitamin D, Mm -hmm. Well, makes fine deep. But the reality is that our skin is actually quite permeable and that most anything that's fat soluble will go across our skin barrier. And if it's not fat soluble, if you leave it on the skin long enough, it'll get, it, it'll get into our bodies. So you might say, well, it's just, I'm just you know, washing for half an hour here, you know, cleaning things up. It's just a short exposure, uh, not a problem. Well, if that was your only exposure was just a half hour of cleaning the products during cleaning the house during the day, that'd be fine. Mm -hmm. The problem is that's actually not only not only one exposure, but it's one of many, many, many exposures, and they all add up, and they add up in a way that is maybe not intuitive. When we think about toxic, you might think, well, one plus one equals two. You know, the more toxic you get exposed to, the worse it is. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, it's uh, rather than simple additive arithmetic, it's more like geometric arithmetic. One plus one equals three. One plus one plus one equals 10. And the reason for that is that we have a limited ability to get rid of toxins. And not only that, we have a limited ability to protect ourselves from toxins. So these are saturatable. These are limitable. So the more you have, you get to a point where you can't detoxify them very well, and they build up more and more. And not only that, but you get to a point where uh, you can't protect yourself from the damage either because it depletes a molecule called glutathione. So as we get more and more toxins, our glutathione levels go down and our oxidative stress in the body goes up and we damage everything. Okay, so with glutathione going down and how important is glutathione in our body? There's a direct uh, inverse correlation between the level of glutathione in the body and every degenerative disease. So if you have Alzheimer's or if you have diabetes, you have a heart disease, you name it, uh, people with those diseases have lower levels of glutathione because it's been depleted, trying to protect it from the toxins that are causing those diseases. Okay, so can we introduce glutathione uh, um, artificially, or is there something that we can do to increase it uh, naturally? Right, so there's three ways we increase glutathione. And the first one is kind of obvious, and that is stop depleting it. Okay, <laughs> okay but how? I mean, sure. That's all we need to know, stop okay. Stop depleting it. And the second one then is to improve our body's ability to produce it. And uh, so you can take dietary supplements like n cysteine or an herb called milk thistle. And then the third way is to actually take glutathione. We can't take it orally because it gets broken down in the gut. Uh, so you can take topical glutathione, you can do IV glutathione, you can do intranasal or inhaled glutathione. So you can, there are a lot of ways to get glutathione into the body. But in general, what I recommend most is giving people n cysteine because that helps the body produce glutathione on its own. N-acetyl... N-acetylcysteine, or N-A-C for short. N-A-C. Right. N and I personally... N and Nancy. Yes. And, and going back to your first question, that is, there are a lot of the toxins we can't control. So you better control everything that you can. Mm -hmm. So that's the whole thing with N-A-C. So I take, even though I'm extremely careful, I take 500 milligrams of N-A-C every day because I know that by increasing my glutathione, I protect myself from toxins by also... Uh, improve my longevity. Okay. So I, I, we could probably do a show just on this alone because I've got like 20 questions that came out of oh, I, I have a 90-minute <laughs> lecture just on glutathione. Okay. Well, sure. that's what the, maybe that, the next show, important. the next show is a 90-minute uh, show on glutathione because, sure, yeah. you know, it's okay. So you had mentioned um, the, that this, the, all the toxins deplete the 
uh, glutathione yeah. and glutathione is important in the body and we can uh, create it. And you had mentioned that milk thistle and then uh, the other one was the NAC, right? right. Okay. And yeah. for someone who is not as careful as you, um, is, is more better? <laughs> is more uh, glutathione so better? It, it, it turns out, yes. Uh, the more glutathione people, the more NAC, NAC people take, the more glutathione they produce in their bodies. Okay. Now, there's one caveat, and a, a few percent of the population, I, I don't know how much it is because I'm still researching it, but I guess it's in the 3 to 5% range, mm -hmm. has trouble metabolizing what are called sulfur compounds. Okay. And glutathione is made out of cysteine, uh, which is a sulfur-containing amino acid. And some people, as their sulfur levels start going up, can have problems with the sulfur. So uh, in a very rare circumstance, uh, if a person started out noticing more like allergies or GERD or irritable bowel syndrome, things like that, they could be having too much sulfur. But if a person already knows that they have trouble like eating garlic or onions or they see sulfites in the foods they're eating as preservatives, they see the sulfites, they have reactions to them, then they're most likely to have trouble with their sulfur metabolism. Okay, so this is an important, a very important information that I, I want to just dive in a little bit, if you don't mind, with the uh, NAC that you, um, and, and NAC stands for, again? N-acetylcysteine. N-acetylcysteine. So, so the thing is, you can't just take cysteine because it gets broken down by bacteria in the gut. When we take N-acetylcysteine, the cysteine gets through the gut and into the body. Okay, so with that in mind, is it preferred to take NAC with some other supplement? Because, you know, there are some supplements that you cannot take like vitamin C with for a while, like calcium and vitamin C, you can't take that, or thyroid medication with vitamin, there's, or calcium. There are certain um, supplements that block supplements from kind of permeating into the body. Is that true for anything with NAC? So that's a very good question, and I'm not aware of anything. Um, but as a, one of the things that I do when I'm talking to my general populations is to suggest when you're taking NAC, it's a good idea to take a little bit of extra molybdenum as well. I would molybdenum, what? Molybdenum. It's a trace mineral. Uh, uh, the, short, the initials are MO, molybdenum. And molybdenum is the trace mineral necessary for those enzymes to metabolize sulfur compounds. Mm -hmm. And my assumption is that molybdenum levels in the diet are lower now than they used to be as well because all the other trace minerals are decreased. I haven't actually seen a study that says that, but I would expect that's the case. Okay, so let's get back onto our topic because that, that, yeah. that was my little yellow brick road. I just got off my <laughs> yellow brick road here. It's time to get back on. Okay, so with that in mind, I just started talking about the, the toxins and cleaning with our, our hands or instead of using gloves and masks or anything like that. But this is not the toxins I'm talking about. The toxins that we, we know those are harmful to us, but yet they're still in our home. Right. And little by little, I've been eliminating many of these toxins, but there is something now, there's a new market, natural, less toxicity. And, you know, we have, you know, products that have essential oils. How are, are those, is there anything that we are we need to be aware of that we need to look at and say okay even if it says organic even if it says natural are there any products that we should say never ever ever purchase so that's a very good question and let me address that a little differently okay so first off you know i use an app called think dirty and i'll yeah. tell you if there's bad things in that okay yes but I'm, I'm gonna go further and say listen to your body so for example my wife my dear wife laura uh, has been really good about getting the toxins out of her environment. But she likes lavender, okay? She just loves the smell of lavender. So uh, one of the things we started doing is to just, you know, we, we keep looking at the research, and now we're doing uh, two saunas a week. We made a pledge to do two saunas a week. So mm -hmm. far, we're average about one sauna a week, but we're, yeah, we're working on it. Yeah. So last time, uh, she put lavender oil into the sauna because she thought, you know, lavender oil is nice and cleaning and, you know, natural, et cetera. So uh, she was a little busy, so I got into the sauna first. And after 30 seconds, I had to leave because I couldn't breathe. Oh. Because for me, there's some molecule in lavender that I can't detoxify. And I was having trouble breathing, so I had yeah. to leave. So what I'm saying, listen to your body. So I'm saying to my body, okay, yep, uh, lavender is natural, but for me, there's something in it that I can't detoxify. So Do listen you think that maybe she used too much? Or maybe it doesn't belong there? It didn't bother her whatsoever. She loved oh. the smell. 
Okay. Ah. okay. So, and I, I don't think that's true of many people, but uh, I would say that anybody who noticed that they're sensitive to, to smells, sensitive to perfumes, sensitive to, you know, exhausts when it smelled out of yeah. exhaust, yeah. anybody who knows those things really strongly, mm -hmm. you're, you're more likely to be toxic to even natural things. Because mm -hmm. for some reason, your enzymes, either the genetics uh, aren't quite right or you miss a nutrient necessary for detoxifying them. Uh, you need to listen to your body. Good. Very good. Now, what about the makeup? Women, we love to play with makeup. And I just mentioned to you that I just started wearing uh, a new foundation, a new new makeup. Today, I'm wearing it today. It's the first time I use it. Okay. Cleansing products, all organic. The company is called um, Keep Me Safe Organics, and it's here in our town. And right. so- um, what are some of the toxins that we need to be aware of? Because you were talking about how some of these toxins are ca causing infertility. Yes. So having just finished my work, my research on infertility, I shouldn't say finished, having gotten enough done, I can give a lecture on it. Um, yeah, you're never finished, are you? <laughs> I'm never finished. So one of the things I've been doing is trying to figure out, well, which are the worst sources of toxins? You know, what percent comes from food? What percent comes from water, health, beauty, et cetera? And after doing this lecture, I just increased health and beauty aids for women from being 10% of the source of toxins to now 15%. 50, maybe, five, zero, five, no, zero? One, 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 five. one, five, okay. One, five. Uh, and it may go up more. And I'm also, looks like I'm gonna increase it for men as well, but I, I need to look at a couple more studies. Okay. Because what I'm finding is that the stuff that's in the, our cosmetics is, has become a primary cause of infertility. I mean, here we are, use all these cosmetics that we would, we will be attracted to yeah. uh, um, our partner, whomever we want to be our partner. Okay? <laughs> and, you know, nature says, yeah, we have a partner, you know, most of us are expecting to get babies out of it too. Well, you make yourself more attractive, but you make yourself less able to have babies. Wow. So very worse. Okay. So what are some of these um, chemicals that we need to, because, you know, the other day I was, I was um, buying some uh, shampoo and it was saying gluten-free. Well, you know, that's good. But then I look at like orange juice and I'll see gluten-free. Now, I don't even know they're that. Right. You know, like, that doesn't even belong there. No. So um, what are some of the things that we need to look at that we say never on our skin? Right. So there, there are three that have, uh, are, in co well, there's two that are in cosmetics uh, a lot and a third that has been in cosmetics and is supposed to have been removed. Let me do the last one first. And that is we used to have lead in our lipstick. Mm -hmm. Okay, so make sure whatever lipstick you're, you're using does not have lead in it. And you can go to many countries and still get lead in your lipstick. So don't wow. do that. Wow. It's not, not a good idea. But the ones that are now present everywhere are what are called parabens and phthalates. So the uh, research on them is very scary, particularly the parabens in fertility. Mm -hmm. okay. So the parabens are a chemical that are added to our cosmetics as antimicrobial agents. So they're to keep them from bugs growing on our cosmetics. That makes sense, okay? Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, they're very, very damaging to our fertility. Mm. And the other one is what are called the phthalates, and the phthalates are put into health and beauty aids and into household cleaning products because they act as solubilizers and stabilizers for fragrance. So if your cleaning product smells nice, most likely has phthalates. Okay, it's time to smell. Use your nose, use your senses. And we're going to continue our conversation with Dr. Pizzorno when we return worldwide at whenyouneedafriend.com. We'll be right here waiting for you. So if it smells good and it says perfumes, then that one, I, I now stopped anything that says perfume on it. I don't buy it. If it's like a cleanser or anything like that, because that's an artificial... Um, essential oils, so to speak, right? Right. So, you know, um, my assumption is that there are ways of putting the fragrances into products that don't require phthalates. But since phthalates have been accepted as safe in the past, I don't think people have looked into how to do this without the phthalates. Mm -hmm. I suspect there are people that are doing it. I just, I'm just starting from the position of avoid the perfumes because right now we know they have phthalates. So, Okay, so I, I want to expand on the parabens and the phthalates when we go back on the air, but let's go back to lipstick. So what are the things that are okay? Because I have heard that when people use like chapstick, for example, or um, what's the other one? The petroleum jelly. Um, 
that we put on babies' bottoms and people that have eczema, they put that petroleum jelly on their skin. I'm like, no, that's petroleum, you know? So they, they don't even hide the fact that it's petroleum. So right. are those, you. yeah, <laughs> we're like, oh, petroleum jelly, great, must be good for us. But we put that in our car, right? Right, right. Yeah, so how does that um, affect us? So um, I haven't looked at petroleum uh, jelly specifically for toxicity. Uh, I've been looking at other molecules as well, so I can't give you hard data on that. I'm okay, sure. that's fine. Uh, I, so this is a little confusing for you. Are we on the air now or are we still? We are still recording, but we're not on the air. Okay. Yep. So um, I, I, as we're talking, I decided to just bring up my, my PowerPoint from okay. uh, before. Okay. And I'm looking at, for example, on this one is infertility male. Okay. And, uh, and I, what I do is I go through from the worst to the least toxic. Mm -hmm. And number one for infertility in males is parabens. And men with a top 25% body load of parabens have a 79% drop in their fertility. Oh, we need to say that on the air, doctor. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so, and I want to know, don't say it now, where do men get their parabens from? Because, you know, men are not as, you know, using, I don't think of men as using chemicals. Like I used to put all this lotion on my skin so that my skin would be smooth. Now I use coconut oil, you know, uh, or shea butter. I actually okay. melt my shea butter and mix it with my coconut oil and make my own lotion now. Uh, right. But, you know, men shave. Let's see, right. what else? They bathe with their soap, hopefully. Do they, and do they, they use shampoo. They, and, exactly. And do they, uh, for example, use soaps that have antimicrobial agents in them? Okay, because using soaps with antimicrobial agents in them, they can have parabens. Oh, yeah? Yes. But didn't they didn't they ban the um, antimicrobial soaps? Some of them have been banned. There's others as well. You know, we, everybody. I mean, I just walked through the airport. Right on the airport, all, all on the walls are these dispensers with these antimicrobial uh, chemicals you're supposed to put on your hands. You see at the hospitals too. I, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so um, one of the so parabens. You know, you hear that these parabens are bad, but um, it'd be great to find out how they affect us so that we can be aware. Now, yesterday when I was spending time with Rebecca, she is the owner and the founder of Keep Me Safe. Um, she was telling me about um, how that Europe bans about 1,300 ingredients, but the FDA only bans about 30 of those. Unfortunately, the um, U.S. standards for many of the toxins uh, are much more lenient than found in Europe. Why? Uh, Why? So this is well. Let me let me just answer that. This is right. the place that approves GMOs. <laughs> that we we are. It's okay to have GMOs, but many places in Europe don't even allow them. Yes, um, there are a number of examples. So we'll continue this conversation. This is amazing, amazing, amazing. You can text Lillian McDermott or leave her a voicemail at 407-373-5959. Once again, here's Lillian. Welcome back to the Lillian McDermott Radio Show, where you can hear us worldwide at whenyouneedafriend.com. I'm your host, Lillian McDermott, and I'm so grateful to be able to have this conversation and share this time, learn from all the teachers that come on the show. Today is such an important show because, and, and especially, I say this every time, but I really, I'm, I really mean it every time, but go to whenyouneedafriend.com and click on you know, the YouTube video so that you can see and hear Dr. Joseph Pizzorno uh, in between the show. Because while you're listening to my sponsors, which is very important, he and I are talking about things that we don't have time to talk about on the air. And so I want to encourage you to go to whenyouneedafriend.com and listen to some of the things that we're saying, because it's very important that we become informed. Information, education, that's very powerful. The choice to make an informed decision is being taken away from us because we're giving our freedom away. And so it's very important that 
um, you research everything that you're hearing here. It's just a baseline. I, I want you to trust but verify everything, even myself. I want to en encourage you to do that. I also want to encourage you to go to whenyouneedafriend.com, become a subscriber. And while you're there, please check out my sponsors because without my sponsors, the show would not happen. I am so grateful that we've been able to expand um, the Lone McDermott radio show, not only to radio, but we're also on podcasts, we're on YouTube, we're on social media. So when you go to uh, whenyouneedafriend.com, click on every button that would make things easy for information for you. I, get, I send out a blog. When you're a, a subscriber at whenyouneedafriend.com, I send out a blog every week so that you know who's going to be on the show, what the topics are before anybody else does. Dr. Joseph Pizzorno has spent his life teaching people an integrative way, not, pe not just people, doctors as well. These doctors that are furthering their education to learn more. Dr. Pizzorno is in Orlando this weekend. He's going to be giving a talk to doctors so that they can also hear this, so that we can go back to our, you know, our doctors be deprogrammed from just prescribing medication. We have got to be our own medical detective, our own MD. And so I want to encourage you, if you have any questions about um, the topic today, the, for the, the book, The Toxin Solution, I want to encourage you to call 407-373-5959 or text me. I don't answer the phone, but I can at least listen between uh, the, the show. Now, Dr. Pizzorno, I am so grateful to you for coming on and sharing your information, especially on a busy day like today and tomorrow. I am, I'm, I'm hoping to be a fly on the wall and while you're talking to doctors tomorrow. And so here's the deal. You talked about off the air about parabens, but why, why are parabens uh, dangerous? What do they do to our body and why should, what can we um, substitute products with that don't have, or if, if it has paraben, can you find a non-paraben uh, alternative? So yes, uh, non-paraben alternatives definitely do exist. <clears throat> That's one of the things that will be checked when you're looking at things like mm -hmm. security and such. The, so the, how should I say this? I'm a true believer in natural medicine. Matter of fact, I, I prefer you say, rather than alternative therapies you're telling people about, tell them it's natural, natural therapies. Yeah, but they've taken the word natural and they've changed it too. Okay, well, let's put it back to what it's supposed to be. Okay, just like the word so, responsibility, right? Because <laughs> I, I, I don't like the term alternative. It implies one or the other. Okay. But in reality, we need all of medicine. We need conventional medicine. Sure. Um, you know, it's not throw a baby with the bathwater. Sure. Just conventional medicine does some things that are great. Unfortunately, for everyday health, conventional medicine is not only not very good, but many situations in the long run makes things worse. Okay, mm -hmm. my little my little soapbox for a moment. No, no, I love it. I love it. It's great to 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 hear a different perspective. Right. So I'm I'm pretty agnostic about these things. And what I mean by that is, uh, I look at what the research says. I prefer we use natural products, but even for some people, natural products may be problematic. Although it's really rare. Mm -hmm. uh, and but even some not quote unnatural products they're not necessarily toxic so we have to kind of objectively look at them and make good decisions mm -hmm. so when i look at parabens for example i would just look at the research on parabens and infertility and i was stunned by what i found so the way we determine uh trying to figure out how bad these things are is we compare uh those with the top body load of a particular toxin and look at what diseases they have compared to people at the bottom uh Body load of toxins. Mm -hmm. So people would look at the top 25% versus the bottom 25%. Sure. Okay. And the reason we do that is in the real, in the optimal world, we prefer to look at people with the toxin versus people without the toxin. The problem is everybody's got these toxins. So we mm -hmm. have to look at who has them worst versus who has them least. Mm -hmm. So I was looking at fertility. And so, you know, we think first off, we think, of course, about the female side. We have to think about the male side as well. And so one of the first toxins I looked at was parabens and male fertility. And I was stunned to find that men in the top 25% of paraben, a body load of parabens, have a 79% drop in fertility. So it's just, just dramatic. 70? 79% drop. 9%. Okay, which means that uh, they're likely gonna be, uh, if they're, you know, they have, try to get pregnant with a, with a, with a woman, they're likely to end up in a fertility clinic because their sperm's not working properly. So it's just, it's yeah. really worrisome. 
So, okay, not everybody wants to have children, right? At different phases in their life. Maybe they've had their children. Someone like me, if I were to get pregnant right now, I'd be a billionaire. So, right. but, but that's not my point. How do, uh, how do parabens affect me? I don't want to be fertile. How does a, a paraben affect a person who is uh, postmenopausal, premenopausal, whatever? Well, do, do you want diabetes? Ah, that's what I want to know. Okay, so it okay. affects diabetes. It affects their their the ability to process glucose. So um, the mechanism, I'm I'm not sure. I've I've been looking the wor most work I've been doing on just trying to find out which are the worst ones, how much disease are they causing. Then I didn't start look. Then I started looking at the mechanisms. So probably mm -hmm. next year I'll start uh, including mechanisms. Mm -hmm. uh, so parabens do things like bind to insulin receptor sites. So on your cells. In order for the cells to accept sugar, they have to react to insulin. Well, if there's parabens on the insulin receptor sites, the cells can't respond to the insulin. So the pancreas has to overproduce insulin to get sugar into the cells. And while that's a good indication of how wonderfully adaptive our bodies are, if you do that to the poor pancreas for 20 to 30 years, eventually it burns out because you've overused it. Now you can't produce enough insulin anymore. Now you've got diabetes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so what else? Okay, so parabens can can um, exacerbate. Like for example, I'm a tr I'm a firm believer that if I eat junk, then I'm going to expose my body to disease and all of that. So along with, so if I have a predisposition to eating foods that are harmful for me, and I top that with parabens in my skin, now what? So our bodies are enzyme machines, okay? Um, that means in order for us to produce energy, to make muscle, to even breathe, you know, all these things uh, require enzymes. Mm -hmm. And those enzymes are composed of two parts. They're composed of a protein called an apoenzyme, and that mm -hmm. protein is determined by our genetics. But it's just an inert uh, molecule until we add to it the cofactor. Cofactors are typically vitamins and minerals. So first thing you have to do in order for the enzyme to work properly is you have to make sure you're eating food that has vitamins and minerals in it. Okay. And because of our modern agricultural procedures, the vitamins and particularly the trace minerals in the foods have dropped dramatically. Like a copper, for example, involved mm -hmm. lots of important enzyme systems in the body. Well, it's 75% lower now than it was 50 years ago. So if you're eating the fruits and vegetables, the minerals aren't there. But the second thing, and here's where, here's where many of the toxins cause trouble, is that they displace the cofactor from the enzyme system and replace it with themselves, a metal or, or, or a chemical, and the enzyme doesn't work anymore. Hmm. So what you're doing is you're basically poisoning your body. Now, it's not like you, you know, just consumed a lot of cyanide and you, you, know, you, you died right away. Yeah. But you're dying more quickly, even though it's slower, you're dying more quickly because when the enzyme systems don't work properly, your body doesn't work properly. And when you're relatively young, uh, you can get away with it because we have a huge adaptive ability. But as you get older, as your DNA starts getting damaged, as you start not making the protein part quite as well anymore, it becomes much more susceptible to uh, damage, being damaged because of these environmental toxins. Mm. Now, okay, so you have a list on your, in your book, like the chemicals and the purpose, like acrylics for artificial nails, uh, aluminum for antiperspirant, and uh, and some other things that I can't even pronounce. Right. Moisturizers. Uh, what is the moisturizer? The the word for moisturizer that is the chemical in the moisturizer. Uh, it's the I, I, D E A. It's D E A. Is the uh, oh. the acronym? Uh, too early in the morning for me to remember. It's Sorry. Dio. Th Diethylamine, diethylamine, blah, 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 blah. So that one right there, you're saying that that is a toxin and how it exposes it, us right. to it. It's, it's a toxin. I haven't studied that one as deeply because it hasn't shown up as on my radar screen as bad as, as many of the other ones. But just hair dye. So you have hair dye as well. Right. And well, how do we avoid that? Okay. Hey, guys, uh, if you used to use hair dyes, they had lead in them, okay? It's yeah. part of the process. And trying to pretend that lead doesn't get in your body, sorry, it does get into your body and gets stored in your bones. And if you start losing your bones as you get older, all that lead comes out. Uh, so, 
and it's and 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 then you've got a, a reaction going on. Okay, so um, I, I need to dissect some of these chemicals found in our health and beauty aids, and we're going to continue our conversation with Dr. Pizzorno of the Toxin Solution when we return worldwide at WhenYouNeedAFriend.com. We'll be right here waiting for you. So we have Dr. Pizzorno. We have acrylates, and you're saying that it's cancer and fetal damaging. So people right. that are pregnant with artificial nails, what do you say to them? Stop doing the artificial nails. I mean, what, okay, first off, if you're going to get pregnant, please spend a year beforehand cleaning your body as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Because these things, uh, when women are toxic, uh, uh, when I was in school, we were told that pregnant women do everything they can to optimize the environment for their children. So the fetus that's developing in the womb. And so we said, you know, you should be careful. You don't give any toxins to the, to the woman, but we, we know she'll do her best to protect the baby. Mm -hmm. Well, we now know that that's simply not true. And as a matter of fact, look at the animal research. The mothers concentrate the toxins in the fetus to get them out of the body because Mother Nature decided the mother's more important in the long run than are the babies. Mm -hmm. okay, so give me a year, get the toxins out, then get pregnant. Now, for example, uh, mercury. If you look at the amount of mercury in a woman's brain and look at the amount of mercury, this is animal research, look at the amount of mercury in, a, in the fetus, of, in the animal, the fetus's brain has 40% more mercury than the mother's brain. Wow. So, yeah. And then look at nursing, for example, breastfeeding. Uh, breastfeeding, uh, basically, is a very good way, probably the most effective way I know right now of getting PCBs out of the woman to have her breastfeed. <laughs> and of course, that sounds good for the woman, but where is it going? It's going to the baby. Maybe. So we have to- And where have, do we find PCP, P, PCBs? Everywhere. They were banned 43 years ago because they're what are called persistent organic pollutants. They, they break down extremely slowly in the environment. So the fish are contaminated, particularly farm fish are contaminated. They're everywhere. And it so, turns out when I was looking at infertility, PCB showed up for both men and women. Okay, so PCB is- um, Polychlorinated biphenyls. Okay, and where do we find PCBs? <clears throat> So they were um, primarily being used in industrial, for industrial purposes, uh, like in transformers and things like this. But then when a transformer uh, blew up or whatever the case may be, it spreads into the environment. Once it gets into the environment, you can't get rid of it. So the, um, if you look at the fish, look at dolphins. Uh, the thyroid activity in dolphins is about 15% lower now than it was 50 years ago because the dolphins have been poisoned by, with PCBs that block thyroid activity. Mm. Wow. And that's in a transformer that blows. It's not like it's in a product that's in our in our. Uh, they, they've, been, they've been banned, but they just once you got in the environment, they're they're everywhere. And they can't be collected back. They can't be no. taken back. No, We're very very slowly they're broken down. So our PCB levels as a species has gone down about fifteen percent after banning these things forty three years ago. It's only gone down fifteen percent as a species. Okay, so. Let's, let's, okay, so this hair dye, oh, we got 30 seconds before we're coming back. Okay, so let's talk about some of the things that, at this point, this is your pep talk, to get rid of things, get, add things to our life. I'm looking at this, um, the moisturizer, the dithanolamine, and you said that that is a uh, converted to cancer-causing nitrosamine skin cancer. Right. Yeah. 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 And we blame the sun. And we blame the sun. Blame the sun. Blame the sun. on our skin. This is our last Next, Lily segment, Maker. right, Brian? We'll leave her a voicemail at 407-373-5959. Once again, here's Lillian. And welcome back to the Lillian McDermott Radio Show, where we always learn with one another Today's teacher is Dr. Joseph Pizzorno of The Toxin Solution. This book is the, about how hidden poisons in the air, water, food, and products we use are destroying our health and what we can do to fix it. Now, what can we do to fix it, Dr. Pizzorno? Because, you know, we have so many things. And I said to you, can you give us like the ABCs of things that we need to throw out uh, and how we can start building our body? Great, yeah, exactly the right question. And so again, I'm gonna emphasize uh, to start, and that is don't let them in. Avoidance, avoidance, avoidance. I can't say it loud enough. 
because while some of these things we can get rid of pretty easily, many of them, they last in the body for years and even decades. Mm -hmm. So you've got to avoid them as much as best you can. So the second step then is to how, help our body's own natural processes to get rid of these toxins. And we'll start with something incredibly simple, and that is eat more fiber. Take it okay. as a dietary supplement. Because when the liver tries to get rid of these things, it dumps them into the gut and expects the toxins to then bind to the fiber in the gut, get it out of the body. Okay. Well, as we evolve as a species, we consumed 100 to 150 grams of fiber a day. So that's what our liver is expecting. Right now, we consume 20 grams of fiber a day. So a lot of these toxins come back into the body through something called intrahepatic recirculation. Mm. So that reason that exists in the body is uh, the body wants to reabsorb certain nutrients that may be uh, in, in a uh, dumped from the liver that the body wants to have back. Because right. part of the process given the toxins, we lose some things we want as well. Mm -hmm. Well, the problem is taking those things that we want back into the body, if there's not a fiber there, we'll also talk, bring back anything we don't want into the body. Got it. Of fiber. Yes. The second thing then is to help the uh, improve, improve glutathione levels in the body. As we talked before, that can be done with cysteine. If a person would rather have a food source, whey powder is very high in cysteine. That works quite well. And then the herb uh, milk thistle, Slimum marianum, actually stimulates the liver to produce more glutathione. Okay. Now, it turns out there's some foods that can promote the production of glutathione as well, like cabbage family foods, for example, produce uh, more glutathione. So the number of uh, ways we can increase glutathione. Uh, exercise increases glutathione. Uh, uh, yoga increases glutathione. So there are a bunch of things we do that we've always known have been good for us. And it turns out we do think that everybody knows are good for you, like exercise and like stress reduction, things of this nature, glutathione levels go up. Okay. Then the third strategy is that when you know what the exact toxin is, then develop the right strategy for that toxin. So, for example, uh, people know about olester containing products. Um, they used to be available readily as a way to get rid of uh, cholesterol, mm -hmm. and they do decrease cholesterol. But when you take a lot, you get this kind of the smelly, oily diarrhea. People don't like it. <laughs> okay, but at lower dosages, well, at high doses, it works, of course. But even at lower dosages, these what are called bile sequestrants actually are very good at getting rid of the what are called the persistent organic pollutants, like the PCBs that are so hard to get rid of. Mm -hmm. Because when these things are in our gut and the liver dumps them into the gut, they bind to these bile sequestrants and get out of the body rather than get reabsorbed. Mm -hmm. So I now recommend people who have high levels of toxins, I do recommend that they do things like um, olester or the cholestyramine, chol cholestomide, things of that nature. Well, I remember a, a while ago, they were frying, they were doing potato chips in olestra. Yes. And that's when people started getting uh, explosive bowel movements. Right. And so how, what is another way to get Alestra? Is there, is there like a supplement, like a tiny little supplement? So the uh, Pringles Light used to be made with Alestra. Uh, now they're being made with vegetable oil. I understand you can still get them. Now, I'm not a great believer in, in Pringles because I think they're you know, highly processed. That is, yeah, exactly. Think, but on the other hand, if they're effective for getting these very toxic supplements out of the body, then fine. You know, if, if a patient needs a drug, uh, that's the best thing for them. I'll recommend the drug. Okay, <laughs> not, It's not my first choice, but if it's the best choice, I, I, that's what I'll do. So you're saying that Pringles, <laughs> is there any potato in Pringles anyway? But uh, So there's no form, there's no supplement for Alestra? I'm not aware of anything. It's a, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a man-made molecule. It's a man-made so, molecule. Right. Well, but, but, but here's where you can work with your family doctor. So if, uh -huh. you, if you get tested, you have high levels of these toxins, go to your family medical doctor or a the doctor like me with a broad license and get it prescribed. Seriously, get these things out of your body. And it may take six months, it may take even 12 months, but whatever it takes, get these things out of your body because they're poisoning you. And if you're a woman or a man, who wants to have babies, it's going to poison your babies as well. I was, I was looking in your book and you're in, on their aluminum, antiperspirants uh, is a contributor to Alzheimer's disease, but yet everybody uses antiperspirant. I don't, I use crystals, the, the rock, okay. and that's what I use and I love it. And so um, how, how is that for the, what, what should you look like for an, an anti, antiperspirant? So it says, if it says antiperspirant, it automatically has aluminum? Not necessarily. I mean, the standard ones, yes, do have aluminum. But I would say if you find yourself being really smelly, what are you eating? <laughs> I, I'll, I'll tell you, when I became vegetarian, 
my body order dropped ninety percent. Wow. Okay. So I'm not saying you have to be vegetarian, but I'm saying, okay, a certain amount of body order is natural. A lot of body order, it's not because of deficiency in 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 deodorant. deodorant. <laughs> <laughs> else food for thought. Out. Food for thought. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, and then moisturizers, um, like we put it on our face and our body. Um, instead, can we use like coconut oils or olive oils or those? What is what is good for our skin? Yeah, my, my preference is to use more natural products like that. Let's look at if you can eat it, it's probably okay to put it on your skin. Okay, if so you that's eat it, well, putting your skin it still gets into your body. So if you can eat it, probably a good idea. Okay. And are there any products that you want to, because we were talking off the air, there is a million makeover movement. Um, and, and this is uh, by the company that I was telling you about, the Keep Me Safe, that I'm using their cosmetics uh, now because of you, Dr. Pizzorno, I've been in the search for uh, organic cosmetics. Sure. And so on there, they talk about nanoparticles. Mm -hmm. What can you say about nanoparticles or they promote a non nanoparticle. What is important about that? Unclear at this point. So for example, there are some herbal medicines like one that I take every day called Theracumin, that's nanoparticles of curcumin, okay? That means it gets it into the body very, very easily. So I think I, I'm not necessarily against nanoparticles per se. The question is what, what kind of nanoparticles are they? Like are they carbon nanoparticles? So we can start getting things like that with their unnatural substances, then I start being worried because they bypass our normal protective barriers. And that's the key factor here. The nanoparticles get into our body really efficiently. So make sure whatever the nanoparticle is, it's something you want in your body. Yeah, because I've, I've been looking at, like now I don't use any talc. I mean, they, they you know, remember we used to like puff our children with talcum powder. And what, what does that do to us, Dr. Pizzorno? Yeah, I haven't studied talcum powder, powder so I, I can't answer that particular one. Well, you know, it, it was causing ovarian. Uh, Johnson & Johnson got in trouble because they knew that it was causing uh, issues and they were sued. But what the lawsuit is for is what they make in a day. So it's like no big deal. So the talcum powder was producing ovarian cancer in little children. And, um, and as well as um, what I wanted to ask about, um, you know, mica and all these other like all these makers we just need to we need the book we need this book it's called the toxin solution that way because we can't bring dr pizorno with us everywhere is it have you i would love for you to do a video dr pizorno with everything in your pantry everything in your cabinet all the makeup your wife uses so that we can kind of take some mental notes yeah that'd be a good idea bring my wife into this process because i do all this research she's the one who actually makes it practical in our everyday lives. Maybe and we next time step she can by come. Step by step, clean up our environment. And yeah, I'm just trying to walk through and say, here's why we make this choice versus another choice. Absolutely. That would be great. Because you know and we continue to do that. Yeah, let's let's do that. Let's do that. Because there's a lot of things that we need to be aware of. Uh, and so we just need to protect ourselves. Dr. Pizzorno, I am so grateful to you. I'm looking forward to it. I'm hoping that I'll be able to go tomorrow. We're still trying to finalize some things, but I'm looking forward to listening to uh, and this is a, a, an, an event for doctors or for, is it to it's see for, you? It's for doctors, yes. Yes, okay. PGA Medical Education. CMA. Got it, got it. Thank you, Dr. Pizzorno, for the information today. I know that because of it, I'm changing my makeup, my cleansers, yes. everything on my skin. And I want to say thank you to make, for making me aware of it. Glad, I'm glad that it's a, I've helped you. I know. So today I've got new makeup. Okay, so, to, uh, so for those of you, my listening friends, it's time to uh, empower yourselves. Read labels, not only that you're eating, but what you're putting on your skin as well. And please remember, I'll be right here waiting for you worldwide at whenyouneedafriend.com. This is Lily McDermott wishing you love, peace, joy, and unexpected abundance. Make it the best day ever Robert. very good job good job this is we could probably do over and over and over again i don't know what you're going to what, what is your topic tomorrow autoimmune disease toxins and autoimmune disease scary stuff these toxins so you know when our immune system's developing uh the immune system uh, sees what proteins are in the body and make sure we don't respond to the proteins in the body that are normal but we have a protein in the body, like an enzyme, for example, and you then change it with a toxin, 
is now a new substance and the body starts to become allergic to its own tissues that have been damaged by toxins. Scary stuff. Okay, so for someone who has a thyroid condition, I have a hypothyroidism. Okay. And um, I was put on Synthroid for many, 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 many years, like 15 years or more. Okay. And uh, about, I would say three or four years ago, I switched to Nature Throid. Okay. But my goal is to get off all medication. That's okay. the only medication I take, okay. um, other than bioidenticals. I don't know if you have an opinion on that, but... but uh, I think it's a good idea to do it myself. Okay, great. Um, so, and it's all natural. Bioidenticals are natural, and I make sure that the source is, is plant-based. And um, so, with that in mind, because it's been so many years, I've been told that there's nothing I can do. Could be that missing link, something I'm doing that is affecting my thyroid? Oh, sure. So the, it, with the thyroid, uh, first off, uh, PCBs, cadmium, and mercury are extremely damaging to the thyroid. So I would definitely check those levels in your body. And the second, make sure you've got the nutrients necessary for thyroid to function properly, with the first obvious one being iodine. And, um, our I, just iodine started doing, I just started doing iodine. Good. Because our iodine levels as a, as a, uh, in humans in North America have dropped 50% uh, our iodine intake. So it's been dramatically lower. So it's a surprisingly common problem. How can I test? What, do I, what are the tests that I can do for testing to see if there's any, you said ca um, cadmium. Cadmium, cadmium? And cadmium, cadmium and mercury are the most damaging metals to the thyroid and the PCBs are the most damaging chemical to the thyroid as near as I can tell at this time. So what is a test that I can do to see if I have any cadmium and oh, oh, So I, I use doctor's data. Uh, you send the firstborn urine. And then you take uh, 500 milligrams of DMSA and 300 milligrams of DMPS orally and collect your urine for six hours and send another sample to the lab. So the first one tells your current exposure. The second one is our best way of determining what the body load is. Not a great test, but the best we have at this time. Okay. So I had all my fillings removed. Um, and I noticed with, with, with an ecological dentist. Mm -hmm. Good. I sure did. Good. I did. He put a little sling in my mouth, and we made a big deal about it. Good. So when I learned about, um, I I immediately had it change. Now, one of the things that I've noticed, I've been diagnosed with melasma since I turned forty. Hmm. I'm fifty. I'll I'll be fifty five next week. You're doing and, very well. Yes, thank very, you. Very very pretty lady. Ah, thank you. So I'll be 55. So um, I noticed that ever since I've taken off my um, amalgams and I replaced them, um, or is it called amalgam? So I took yes, up, no. okay. So I, I took them out and I replaced them uh, that my skin that was called melasma is gotten lighter. Hmm. Is there any correlation maybe? No, I haven't looked for research in that area but I would not be surprised because skin problems are one of your signs of mercury toxicity. So the, the first one is almost all neurological. So mental fogginess, uh, trouble remembering things, uh, that's a, a typical sign. But the other typical signs are skin problems and hair problems. Those are pretty early signs of mercury toxicity. And how do you detoxify from mercury? I mean, does it eventually leave your body? Because it's been years. What other things could be causing mercury toxicity? Or right. how, how do you get cadmium toxicity? Okay, so lots of, to lots of topics there. So first one with the mercury, uh, the, the, the three primary sources of mercury. Number one is so-called silver fillings, the amalgam, 55% okay. mercury. And there's a direct correlation between the amount of mercury in your mouth and the amount of mercury in your body. There's no okay. question about it. Okay. So, you know, the people, the dental groups will say that's not true, that the research is clear. Okay. Uh, the second primary source is eating big fish. So if you eat tuna rather than sardines, tuna has 100 to 1,000 times more mercury than do sardines. Mm -hmm. So those are your two primary sources, fish and, and, and filth. So the body can get rid of mercury, but it's slow and it's hard to get rid of. So that's why I give people with high mercury levels, I give them a DMSA. Uh, and I have to, get for, have to get that as a prescription, and you have to be careful about the right dosage because you don't want to make a person toxic, but it will get the mercury out of the body more quickly. I okay. got a great case history of a woman from Canada, early stage dementia, at her wit's end, 67 years old, uh, brain fog, and you know, all the standard mercury stuff. It took a year and a half, 
got all the mercury out, all her symptoms were gone, hair's good, skin's good, all, her, I mean, it's just remarkable what happened. Okay. So, so your, skin, your hair starts falling out when you have too much mercury? Yeah, your hair, hair, hair just thinner and falls out, things like this. But mm -hmm. again, remember, everybody is different. One person may only have neurological symptoms, another person may only have skin and hair symptoms, I mean, we're all biochemically unique, so mercury affects people differently. But statistically, you'll see it in the brain and in the hair and skin. What about chelation? Right. So that DMSA is an oral chelation program. Uh -huh. I'm not. I'm not very excited about IV chelation. Uh, it, it, a good doctor can do it properly. Unfortunately, it's easy to run to trouble with chelation therapy. So I've decided to take a more conservative approach to it. So DMS, DMSA is oral chelation. Now, say, they're selling, they're selling supplements right now that are oral chelations. Right. So it's possible. There's other things I could do oral chelation, for example. For example, fiber could be considered an oral chelation because oh. fiber will bind heavy metals as well. Very nice. Because, so that's why I promote a whole food plant-based diet. Exactly. Whole so. food plant-based diet. It's more than just not getting toxins into your body and not over your, overloading yourself with sulfur-containing amino acids. But it's also with all the extra fiber getting toxins out. Okay, what about cadmium? How do you get cadmium? Because I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good. I mean, I, I don't eat, um, so I, I eat whole food plant-based okay. and very rarely, if I have any animal products, it might be a small piece of fish, might be salmon, all wild caught, never. But now yeah. wild caught could be dangerous too. So with well, so wild, much toxins. Well, unfortunately, we'll also have some PCBs in them, but they're still way, way better than, than fine. Okay, okay. No doubt, mind about so that. cadmium. So the cadmium, the two primary sources of cadmium are number one, cigarette smoking. D don't so smoke. I, yeah, I've, I've, tested, I've tested literally thousands of people and people who smoke have twice the level of cadmium as people don't smoke. It's really, really clear. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the reason cadmium comes from cigarette smoke is because much of the tobacco was grown with what are called high phosphate fertilizers that are contaminated with cadmium. It gets into the tobacco leaf. And there's no more efficient way to get cadmium into your body than by breathing it. Okay. But the other source is foods grown with high phosphate fertilizers, particularly soybeans. So if you're eating conventionally grown soybeans, you have a significant increased risk of elevating your cadmium levels. Now, not all high phosphate fertilizers have cadmium in them, but a lot of them do. Phosphate. High phosphate fertilizers. Okay. So I eat, if, if I have soy, it's got to be non-GMO organic. Exactly. Okay. And just recently, I was um, given a, um, some tempeh. Mm -hmm. And this, these guys, I mean, they pray over their tempeh. They have this. Like, and it tastes just like, like beef, like, like a steak. Mm -hmm. and, and it's all natural, all organic, uh, non-GMO. And I'm, I called them up. After I went to this event, it was called the Feast for Rabbits. And this was one of the, um, which I hate the name, by the way. Um, and and the, the, the chef recreated all animal products with plant foods. Hmm. Amazing. Amazing. But along with it, there was a little bit too much oil. But, but, but outside of that, it was amazing. And this tempeh, they cut it up in tiny little cubes. Hmm. And you would have thought I was a starving woman from the homeless shelter oh, that was given like a, 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 a gold. And I was like putting it in my little bag. I'm like, do you mind? These are left over. Can I have them? <laughs> and I called the owner and I said, I don't care what you do. We need to, you need to show me how to make this. Wow. Yeah, it was really good. I'll, I'll keep you posted on that one. Do you like tempeh? Uh, I do like tempeh. It's probably, my, probably the only soy product that I like. I've never had it until then. Oh, really? Oh, my gosh. That was the first. And it tasted like the way he prepared it, or they prepared it, it tasted just like what I remember beef tasting like. Wow. It's really good. It was well, really smoky. Been, how long has it been since you've eaten beef? It's been since I was 21. Wow. Good for you. 21 in pork, beef and pork. Although I had a little tiny little... Uh, stent there that I did add pork into my life. It was the only thing I could keep down um, mm -hmm. when I was pregnant at 24. Mm -hmm. 
Hmm. Um, I was, I, I was sick the whole entire pregnancy and the only thing I could keep in my system was pork, sweet and sour pork. Listen, listen to your body. (laughs) I was was a sweet and sour pork girl that whole entire pregnancy. Once I figured out it's the only thing I could keep down. I mean, I got so, it got so bad that my ketone levels were so high. My doctor said, I don't care what you do. You need to eat. And, you know, and I I said, bring the trays. And I just, it's just like, I just, I couldn't digest. I couldn't process food. Okay. So, so cadmium, so soybeans, anything else that you need to tell us? I have a a promos to, to record. So I want to hear as much as you can, anything else that we need to be aware of that we may not know, we don't know about. Oh God. What are the worst things? Yes. But if you live in a city or within 100 yards of a highway that has diesel trucks on it, but not be a freeway, just a highway is enough, you must have a whole house filter. You must. Because what's happening, you know, you see that diesel going by, you see that kind of blue black smoke, you think, well, that can't be good for you. No, it's not good for us. And that smoke is full of what are called volatile organic compounds. But what's worse is it's high in something called particulate matter of a size called 2.5 microns. So you see as PM uh, with a little subcase 2.5. That size micron, uh, not only is it bind to the volatile organic compounds, the VLCs and the, and the diesel fumes, but that then penetrates deeply into the lungs and gets into the body very quickly. Animal research has shown that after you expose an animal to the PM t- uh, 2.5, within two hours, you find the PM 2.5 in the brain. Okay, Ooh. it goes throughout the body. And so it's one of those passive things where you think, well, I'm breathing the air, it smells okay. Well, within 100 yards of a freeway, uh, you have a 15% increased risk of a heart attack because of the PM 2.5. If you're within uh, 50 feet of a highway, and look at those high rises, you know, around high freeways and such, a 50% increased risk of a heart attack just from the PMs in the air. Wow. And what can we do about it? I mean, we can't whole go out house, with masks. Whole house filter. So when you're whole home, house. most of your time is being spent at home, you're sleeping and living. And so a whole house filter. If you can't do a whole house filter, then whatever room that you're in, make sure you do one of these high efficiency, uh, uh, very effective uh, filters in that room. So typically bedroom and family room, kitchen, where most people spend their time, I have filters in those rooms. 50 to 100 yards. And it's all from diesel fuel. Well, well, but live in the city. So diesel fuel, people smoking, uh, barbecues, uh, you know, automobiles themselves, burning, burning oil for heating, uh, mm-hmm. all the stuff is producing these toxins that end up in the air. What's the good news, Dr. Pizzorno? The good news is that we're finally becoming aware of this and we're doing something about it. Okay. And you know, I'm a great, I, my, my philosophy is more libertarian than anything else. And the good news is that the more we buy the safe products, the less we buy the unsafe products, what are the manufacturers going to do? They're going to stop producing unsafe products and produce safe products. So, you know, the marketplace works. I love that. I, I remember, I remember when I first started eating organically 50 years ago, uh, there was a place called Puget Consumers Co-op in Seattle. There was one tiny little store. Actually, there were, th- there were three health food stores in all of Seattle. And when we went there, the fruit was, I remember the apples. The apples were these kind of little shriveled up things, you know. You had to kind of eat it on faith. <laughs> uh, and there's, there, you know, there wasn't a lot of organic food available, and it wasn't very good quality. Now look what's available to us. You don't have to go to the health food store, though. It's a good place to go because people there typically care about what's going on. But go to your major supermarket. They all now have an organic section. Now, even though the organics aren't as good as they should be based on you know, what, what we know to be right, because, you know, agribusiness is managed to put enough, some loopholes in there to make it less mm-hmm. viable. Mm-hmm. But the bottom line is it's still better, it's still significantly better. So the more, we, the more we live our lives this way, the more that what we need will be manufactured for us. And in the book, The Toxin Solution, of course, is the Clean 15 and the Dirty Dozen right. and, um, and so much more information. Thank you, Dr. Pizzorno, for doing everything that you do to make us aware that it's not just the food that we're eating, but it's also our environment and what we're putting on our skins that are 
also we need to look at that are affecting us. So thank you for what you do. And I am very grateful that I've had the pleasure to interview you twice. I'm looking forward to our next conversation. Great. And to you, my viewing friends as well, I look forward to our next conversation. And thank you for listening and watching.